The next case to come before this, the court is uh, State versus London. All right, I'll repeat the admonitions again. <laughs> you have 15 minutes each. You can reserve as appellant five minutes if you desire, up to five minutes if you desire. And if there are any uh, children involved, please don't use their initials. Please use their initials. Don't use their names. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good morning again, Your Honors. Giovanna Bremke on behalf of Mr. Thomas Leonard this time. Um, I'm going to go into the facts, pretty significant in this case because they are important and it's almost going to seem like a law school lesson on the elements of um, uh, complicity here. It all stems out of um, a complicity charge. Uh, Mr. Leonard and his, uh, they were in a, their testimony, they weren't in a romantic relationship, they were roommates. Miss Morris um, had been struggling to uh, make finances meet. So, uh, they go, they start off their morning, they go to the First Merit Bank here, just right down the street uh, in Elyria, and ask the branch manager there for a personal loan of $500. That branch manager says, get out of here, we don't offer for personal loans for $500. And they drive, actually Miss Morris drives to the PNC, which is also just right down the street. Um, and she says to Mr. Leonard, um, my client, that... I'm going to ask for gas money from uh, so that we can make uh, you know make it um, out of here, and or you know make we don't have any gas money in this car. It's on e. um, She he stays in the car, and I'm going to again point to you to the transcript the very significant um, areas where he testifies in his on his own behalf. And he's sitting in the car, he's listening to the radio, it's February 1st, so it's cold outside, the window is rolled up, the way the car is positioned, and there's quite a bit of testimony about the way this car is positioned, it, where he couldn't see Miss Morris, she approached somebody in the ATM drive through but he could not see that individual, he could not see her approach, he's smoking a cigarette, so distracted, um, this is transcript page 168, and he's sitting there. Miss Morris gets out of the vehicle. Um, that again, she drove to the PNC, and she, Mr. Leonard, thinks that she's going to ask someone for some gas money. In fact, she does do that. There's testimony that she says she asks um, the woman who is taking her, the money out of the ATM for money. That woman offers five dollars, and that upsets Miss Morris. Um, so she, they get into a physical altercation. Miss Morris ends up getting no money, runs away, and goes back to the vehicle, opens the door, the driver's side. She all, ends up driving away. Again, that's page 171, um, where there's testimony that Miss Morris is the one who drives away. She opens the car and she says, I, drive, I tried to grab a purse and it went bad. It's transcript page 170. And she drives off. Eventually, um, they switch drivers because uh, Mr. Leonard says she's driving erratic. He says, pull over, I'll get in um, and drive. I have yes. a question for you. I, in your brief, you said on page four, it says the positioning of the vehicles and the layout of the parking lot did now allow for Mr. Leonard to observe or hear Mrs. Morris. That's supposed to say did not, not allow. I'm sorry, did okay. not allow. Right. That's so that's a big the, again, right. yes, again, there's a lengthy discussion about the positioning of this vehicle. Uh, to be honest, I don't know that it, Again, I, I bring it up because there was lengthy discussion, but I don't know that it matters because um, Mr. Leonard, again, this is a complicity argument, um, and there's no discussion about he's under the impression she's getting out of the vehicle to go ask for gas money. What she does is she decides to get into this physical altercation and tries to take the woman's, she testified that it was her rent money. Um, there are three different cases that I cite to um, two, which are near identical to this case. One, a mother, um, and actually worse than this case, because in those cases, the driver um, was the, it would be like as if my client had driven away and he didn't. Um, in Ratkovic, um, there was a mother who drove her adult son to the, I believe it was Best Buy, something along those lines. 
and um, he went in. She didn't realize he was going to steal. He stole gaming systems. He gets in the car. He throws these gaming systems in the back seat and says, take off, I stole. And she does. She's charged with complicity, and it's overturned. Uh, in Star, it was a grocery store robbery where the again the getaway driver essentially is charged with complicity, but there's no there's no testimony that um, there was an agreement for complicity prior to the entrance into the grocery store. In Wood, it's a little bit different; it's a murder case, but um, there was it was overturned because there was an idea that um, although there was initially an idea for a agreement for murder or a plan, uh, the defendant was under the impression that the other individual had abandoned that plan, um, although he ended up murdering uh, the individual, and it was overturned on the complicity theory. Again, there's no testimony that Mr. Leonard knew, and he testified on his own behalf, that he knew that Ms. Morris was going to go and elicit this money other than by way of panhandling. It wasn't um, any uh, agreement, and there was no aiding, there was no abetting, he didn't even drive away afterwards, um, and the elements of the complicity are not established. There's no soliciting, there's no aiding, abetting, conspiring, um, and the defense counsel in this case actually made the argument to um, exclude complicity from the jury instructions and had raised um, some of these cases that I cite uh, in his argument saying um, there's not enough for complicity in order to charge the jury with a complicity charge. Nevertheless, that was included in the jury instructions. Counsel, can we take sure. a step back based sure. on the facts that uh, are in the record? Great. Right. Um, the difference in this case between his um, sufficiency argument and his manifest weight argument are what? Well, again, um, it, it, there's not, as far as the um, sufficiency, there's not enough to establish that um, the elements of the sufficiency, the elements of complicity. And um, that's, again, I cite your 2923.03, the complicity elements, solicit, aid, abet, conspire. Um, so, so as it relates to assignment error number one and final assignment of error regarding the jury instructions, his argument is, is that sufficient evidence upon which to find aiding and abetting? Is that correct? Or, yes, or complicity at all. Um, soliciting, there was no plan prior to her exiting the vehicle for um, her to rob this individual. Um, he was just along for the ride. So what then is the argument on manifest weight as it relates to the facts well, again, that um, any evidence that would suggest that there's, um, you know, that there was a plan or, uh, you know, that it's not credible to believe that, um, you know, and there's not a lot of witnesses that testify here. So as far as attacking the witness credibility, um, there's not a lot of witnesses that testify, but the um, and there's really no one who can testify as to an agreement except for Mr. Leonard and Ms. Morris, and she doesn't testify. Um, but that there's not, that the state didn't meet their burden of persuasion there as far as a uh, complicity charge. They didn't establish that there was, um, you know, they, I guess they could have, in theory, presented Ms. Morris, although she might have had her own rights in that regard, um, that there wasn't enough as far as um, the burden of persuasion there to believe that there was an aiding or abetting. So after reading the briefs, and I haven't seen the record yet, but after reading the briefs, <clears throat> there's two things that caught my attention. One is positioning of the car, mm -hmm. and the other is this testimony about uh, Mr. Leonard being outside the car in motion and making some motion with his hands or arms. So I believe that when you're talking about him um, making motions with his arms, um, I believe that, and again, his testimony is a little bit in conflict probably with the, um, the I'm going to say the alleged victim, the one who retrieved the money from the uh, ATM. 
she, I believe, testified that, that he was motivating, <coughs> and he says, to, um, in response to that, um, well, he, it was like, uh, what are you doing type of thing. Um, not, come on, you know, let's go. Um, and so there is some, I believe actually he does testify that he got out of the vehicle but ends up not driving away. Um, she dropped, she chops it in the passenger seat, but she, at some point he realized that what was happening and said, you know, when she said, hey, I, you know, tried to grab a person that went bad, and he's like, what, you know, what so, happened? So there may be some credibility determinations as it relates to whatever that testimony is surrounding that testimony between the victim and the defendant's testimony? Yes, again, I, I, I believe it's hard to even assess because um, you know, the whole point of the complicity is what the agreement was before going into this. Um, and that's why I believe the, the positioning of the car isn't even all that relevant, although there's testimony about it, because, um, you know, his assumption was that she was going to ask for gas money. So whether he was viewing her do that or not, um, it's... What's, all that's relevant is what their agreement was prior to going into this. There was no testimony about that other than his own testimony to say that she told him she was going to ask for um, gas money, essentially in a panhandling form, not in an aggressive steal your purse type of form. Um, so the positioning of the car, the um, all of those things are essentially... Uh, not as relevant as his testimony that says that there was no agreement for that. I'll reserve the rest of it. Thank you. Good morning, judges. Good morning. Up for the record, Brian Murphy, Lorain County Prosecutor's Office. The case before you is about togetherness, the state submits to you. And it's, it's not just about being together, but it's about doing together and, and acting together. Everything that Ms. Morris and Mr. Leonard did on the morning of February 1st, they did together. They woke up in the same house together where Ms. Morris was residing with Mr. Leonard. Uh, by Mr. Leonard's own um, almost admission, uh, they had used drugs together that morning. They then left the house together that morning in Mr. Leonard's vehicle and went to a bank purportedly from Mr. Leonard's own uh, statement, seeking a rather substantial and then left that bank together and arrived at a second bank together, all by the uh, hours of, of 8.30 in the morning, that all that happened. Um, the idea of, of not just being together, but acting together is what lead, led this jury and, and should lead this court to conclude that sufficient evidence was presented that Mr. Leonard aided and abetted, that he supported Ms. Morris in this robbery, uh, that he assisted her, that he cooperated with her uh, in this robbery. One of the things that, that the state wants to point out is Mr. Leonard did not have to know that Ms. Morris intended to physically attack or use force against the victim in this case. There's no question that Ms. Morris robbed the victim. She's a victim, uh, the, the woman that was at the ATM. All the, the evidence had to show was that Mr. Leonard was aware, knew that Ms. Morris was going to steal money because case law establishes, of course, that he's responsible for any ensuing acts of, a, of, of the person he's aiding and abetting. Uh, he didn't have to know that, she, that Ms. Morris intended to utilize force or, or, or physically attack. 
attack of the victim in this case. Of course, counsel, the other side is saying, um, the appellant is saying, well, he knew she was going to go panhandle and try to get money from people. He didn't know she was going to steal money. And so what evidence do you have that he knew that she was well, you, the adventure of stealing money? Judge, what, I, what the state submits to you is, is, first of all, all those facts that were presented to you were all facts as testified to by Mr. Leonard, who, of course, had every motive in the world to lie at that point. Every fact that was presented to you, except for the statements made by Ms. Morris at the ATM, were um, self-serving facts that appellant presented to you, Mr. Leonard presented to you. Look at the transcript sites, page 160-something, page 170-something. That's all during his testimony, first of all. Secondly, Judge, uh, to answer your question, um, the courts say presence, companionship, and conduct. Look to those ideas, those elements, uh, to, to establish aiding and abetting, when it's only circumstantial evidence. And the state you know, basically will concede that this case was built basically on circumstantial evidence. There's no Ms. Morris testifying, of course, to what their agreement may have been there's no uh, uh, direct statements from Mr. Leonard, maybe in, a, in, a, in his interview with police, what uh, his, his mindset was when they uh, arrived at that PNC on the way to the PNC bank where uh, this crime happened. But the car was left running. The car was not in a parking spot. Um, and the car took off quickly. And that's not just the victim telling you that. There was an independent witness across the street at an auto parts uh, store parking lot. He testified that he heard this woman yelling. He heard the car honking. Um, I'm trying to understand about why the speed of, the, um, of leaving the scene is relevant to the complicity charge since it, he testified that she gets back in car and says, uh, this went bad, let's get out of here. No matter who's driving, whether it's her or him. Well, just to interject, it's absolutely important who's driving. If he's, well, not, if he's not driving... I'm not, I'm not saying it's not important who's driving, but what I'm saying is how fast the car leaves the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Why is that important as it relates to the aiding and abetting? Judge, because if the, the, the speed with which the car leaves, the spinning tires that were described. Um, what case law going back almost 40 years now, the, the state sites and brief, from multiple districts, including the 9th district in Grandison, um, the speed with which the car leaves shows that they are trying, that he is trying to drive the car away quickly so as not to be observed. Okay, let's go back to the mother and son Best Buy case. Yes. Son gets in the car and says, Mom, hit it. We got to go mm -hmm. because I just stole from Best Buy. Is there a different outcome in that case? Absolutely. When you look at, when you look at cases that have looked at that Ratkovich case, um, the, the really critical difference that, that, these, that the court's site is there was a mother involved here. They were in that case. That's a mother. That's not something that a mother would do, is basically what the, the seventh district said in Rakovich. When you, when you look at the, and, and interestingly, it was two to one decision. I don't understand that, I'm sorry. So it, in the Rakovich decision, the, the two judges, there was a dissent in that case, but the, the two judges the, the, uh, the decided to overturn that conviction essentially said that's what mothers do. Mothers transport teenage kids to video game stores. Sure. That's all about what happened before the crime was committed, and I understand that is, that is, that is definitely all very relevant. But the question was, if mom had gunned it out of the Best Buy parking lot after son had disclosed he just committed a crime, would the would the speed at which mom left the parking lot make a difference in that case? Would it not have gone in reverse? I mean, I, can't be, speak definitively. I understand. 
you weren't the judge of the family. Correct. As what I, I think what the court relied on basically in Radkovich though was the fact that this is what mothers do. This is what parents do. And there was some discrepancy about it, as I recall in Radkovich, about how quickly the car did leave that parking lot. Um, it was still in a spot. The, it was running in it while parked in that spot. It didn't park, it, as I recall, it did not, the, mom didn't pick that child up that teenager in front of the store, in the in what I described, you know, the driving lane between where cars park in the lot and the kind of storefronts there. Thereby not evidencing some thought that before this happened, she knew she'd have to Correct. make that decision. Correct, Judge. Um, and, and what I what I have here is. There's a paragraph in that decision that just said, it's a significant jump to make, that it's paragraph 23 in that Rakovich decision, that mom knew that because she drove her son to the store, uh, then waited with the engine running in a parking lot close to the store, that significant jump to believe that she knew he intended to go in there and steal those items. Um, the sort of thing with, the, with regard to those two other cases, so I think that's distinguishable. It's a distinguishable case because this wasn't a mother. This was Mr. Leonard, uh, someone who had who needed money either from Miss Woods or for himself and Miss Woods. The the two other cases, just briefly, the the. the Mr. Leonard cites the, the Woods case from 1988. That case was not overturned based on manifest weight or sufficiency given the evidence that the court heard at trial. That case was overturned because the appellate court struck the only testimony that, that, that supported the accomplice liability theory. It struck the grand jury testimony. Without that testimony, the court concluded, you couldn't find an accomplice liability. So that the case is completely different. And as for Star, that wasn't a grocery store robbery. The guy stole, uh, robbed a, a, another person outside the grocery store. And on those facts, when you read that decision, um, Star dropped the, 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 the robber off in front of the store, left the parking lot, drives around. I think he was stopped at a stoplight on the street. And the, um, the individual came from where he robbed, the, the robber comes over to this, like, the intersection, the street corner, and gets in the car. Again, totally distinguishable, uh, those, those two cases along with Radkovich. But the, the tires are squealing the, uh, as they leave the, the parking lot around the back side. They're spinning to get away. It's, it's showing that um, they didn't intend to be there long the way the car is positioned. So to say it's irrelevant is, is, is wrong. And that's there's six cases the state cited that the positioning of the car, the way it's parked, was uh, circumstantial evidence that the, that the driver and the, and the principal offender intended to get away quickly and didn't intend to be there very long at that location. But wasn't location. the evidence that he was not the driver originally? No, Judge. That was Mr. Leonard's statement. Okay. Well, she said uh, the victim stated that she saw him get out of the car. Correct, which is interesting because Mr. Leonard said he didn't get out of the car. Okay. So, and the reason that's important, Judge, is, is it goes toward Mr. Leonard's credibility when he testified. Because if Mr. Leonard doesn't get out of the car, then the victim's making up this statement of him putting his hands in the air as if to say, what's going on? Whatever it implied, him putting his hands in there, And the fact that she was able to identify him in the photo line. So it's very important to remember that much of, that almost anything that supports Mr. Leonard not being an aider and a better is only his statement. 
and well, they're quite contradictory. But it's not his, his burden, counsel. I understand. I so understand. I'm just trying to figure out what the state proved. Okay. So, so, so the state proved that they were together, that they had needed money, that they had gone to a bank and were turned down, so they went to another bank and supposedly somehow, whether it was together or what, they worked together when it happened, the, the female um, exited the car, left the car running, the car was running, and the state is saying that, who testified that he was driving? The victim did. Okay, she said he was actually driving. Correct. Okay. And that the, the female went over to the other female, the victim, and uh, proceeded to rob her. At some point, the victim sees the defendant. Now, this is saying everything that the state is presenting is true. So more of a sufficiency. So this, the female then, I mean the victim then, uh, sees uh, the defendant with his hands up in the air. Uh, did she hear him say anything? Did, she, did the victim hear Mr. Leonard say anything? No. Okay, I don't with his hands up in the air. And at that point, what was the victim? What was she doing, did she say, when she saw him with his hands in the air? I, I don't believe she said exactly what she was doing. Okay, so she didn't testify. She was screaming or honking the horn at that time. I, I, I believe that that's, that that is what she's doing. She's screaming, honking the horn, fighting off Miss Morrison at the same time, trying to look around to see is anyone coming to help me. Did, did the guy across the street testify as to any of that? He testified to hearing a car horn honking. He testified to hearing a woman screaming. Um, it sounded like it was a little later in the in the the unfolding of the incident that he observed this stuff. So he's able to get in his car and later find the car, and what's kind of humorous, at least to me, he, he finds the car to light, but he's in a lane that can't turn left, and, and the, the car Mr. Leonard and Ms. Morris are in is in a left-hand turning lane. So he testifies, well, I, I couldn't follow the car because I was in a no left-hand turn lane. He had to keep going, his light turned, and he went. All he was able to do was get a license plate. Um, I, Judge, I would point out, it's circumstantial evidence again, but um, the officer who initially responds and to Mr. Here, okay, the, the officer who responds to Mr. Leonard's residence sees him driving the car. Um, Judge, you know, as far as the manifest way goes, the state does point out a number of inconsistencies well, with regard to Mr. Leonard's Thank testimony. Thank, thank you, Judge. He asked a lot of questions, questions so I'm sorry. No problem. You have three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I would like to address the rack of victim mother argument. Um, I think the argument that it's a mother and mothers take their children to the video game store, um, you can look at this case and say these are two poor people, their test of their, Mr. Leonard's testimony was they were so poor they couldn't um, get food to eat. So what do poor people do? They drive together places. Um, and again, I don't think that there's a doubt in, in Mr. Leonard's testimony explains that they, that she said she was going to ask for money. Um, that's different than, and, and actually at one point she was offered $5. Um, it was at some point that Ms. Morris had changed um, her tone and decided that $5 wasn't enough. So um, there's no doubt that they, um, and Mr. Leonard testifies that she said, I was, I'm going to go ask for gas money. Um, and the only, again, the thing that I believe is relevant is what that agreement was going in to um, the going into the incident and the only person who can testify to that and again the facts that I cited were um, by Mr. Uh, largely Mr. Leonard's testimony um, but the state doesn't have anything to refute that um, but that the agreement was that she was going to ask for gas money she actually was offered five dollars and decided that that wasn't enough um, she, it wasn't the agreement that they go in and rob this individual and take the money and harm her um, and that is not enough for a um, complicity. Thank you. Thank you.
court will take the matter under advisement, obviously, and issue a written opinion that will be sent to both sides. And we will report it out on our website as well. Thank you very much.